I am trained as a landscape architect and urban designer. I have a team working with me, and we do work in many different places. And as a, as a simple introduction, I just want to show you a few places that you have been, maybe in Montreal, that you know the kind of work that we do. And this is the uh, Clock Tower Beach in the old port of Montreal that was opened two years ago. And this kind of a new park to celebrate the city and the place for general public to go and hang out. The Boule Rose in the gay village on the Rue Sainte-Catherine. We did that for four years in a row and probably in the, another fifth year coming this summer. Or the Tom at the Musée des Beaux-Arts in Montreal where we have this kind of idea of painting but represented onto the public realm that express this idea of landscape but in a much avant-garde way. Or my old loved lipstick force at the convention center that somehow represent the joie de vivre of uh, Montrealers. So what is exactly landscape architecture? I guess all of you think that we, it's people who are doing gardens and don't work in the winter, but I, I would say this, <laughs> this is not the case. Landscape architecture is everything that deals with the outside. Outside a building, it could be in the country, in the suburb, in the city. So it's it's all that the man-made environment that we live and that we negotiate with every day. Landscape architecture is a bit like in cinema. It's made of so many different fields that are brought together, such as architecture, engineering, all kinds of engineering, civil engineering, structural, mechanical, environmental, and also botany, ecology, social science, psychology, all of these things, history, archaeology, millions of different aspects of the profession brought in together and you somehow become the choreograph of making this thing happen in a construction of a new space. I was not born in a city, I was born in the countryside in Princeville outside Quebec and we, I grew up on a dairy farm with agriculture, right? we had rabbits, pigs, dogs, cats, but no pony. And I was working with my father and my brother, and we were harvesting hay and all this stuff, right? And until, and we were living in the countryside where next to a big road, and each summer when we were harvesting, there's always these trailers that were driving by, and I was always wanting to be able to go away and travel as well, but I could not because we were in a farm means that you had to milk the cow every day and that kind of stuff. So for me, this idea of nature is not very romantic. It's something that, it's, that you made a living with, not like the people who are going away in cities and traveling. So this kind of unromantic idea of nature is a way that I'm creating landscape. At 17, my father passed away, and I pursued the dream that he had. He said, Claude, you should be an agronomist. So I went to University of Guelph, not speaking English and started agronomy in the hope of becoming a plant breeder. Finished my science of four years, hated it. So I did apply after of a dream that I had in my, quietly, I, I love flower at that time, not anymore. But at that time, I did apply at University of Montreal and University of Toronto in landscape architecture. And I did not get accepted at University of Montreal. So it was not the end of the world, and, but I was accepted in University of Toronto and went in Toronto. And that was the breaking point for me because I moved into the city and fell in love with cities, right? Going out, the nightclubs, hanging out in cafe, discovering the city, museum, all stuff that I've never been exposed to when I, when I was a kid, but discovering the idea of culture. And pursued further after, completed that, I went to Harvard to do my master in history and theory. So nowadays, I mix all of those things together and I create landscape. We're gonna just sample a few work so you know the kind of scale and projects that I work, but the work that we do with my team is very unconventional, but it has got a world interest in it. And I have to say that it's the stuff that we do, we're trying to make sure that it's understood by everybody, but the work is very playful it always deals with color and humor, joie de vivre, and optimism. 
So there's no romantic idea of this nature. So this is Blue Stick Garden that I made at Matisse 15 years ago. And 3,000 stick planted in the garden instead of flower, but that acted like a landscape, and it just did a huge, huge success. After this, we were invited directly to do a project in California, in Sonoma, with this little uh, site with a, a, a sick tree that we could do whatever we want with it, but it was to do a garden around it. And we said that instead of doing the garden, we would not cut the tree, but we would do something that you would do with your computer, with Photoshopping. Instead of cutting it, we would erase the tree with the scenery so the tree would disappear. In order to do that, we've designed a Christmas ball, the U of the sky, of the Californian blue sky, and ordered 75,000 of them and installed them onto the tree. The same as one by one, strong on the tree, and the tree became the same color of the sky, and it was magnificent. The tree that was dying actually got a second life and got huge, huge recognition. So that, br that brings us back to the Boule Rose pink ball in the Gay Village in Montreal that we did four years ago. And it's this ribbon that is suspended above the street from Pepineau to Berry Street. This is very, very simple, one idea. It's on the public realm. It's a landscape per se because it deals with the kind of a, the built environment. And we're f we have this thing among the trees between buildings that just flies on above people's head. St. Catherine Street on the east side is a kind of a sad neighborhood. And we were asked to do something that will actually bring back a positive energy in the neighborhood. The neighborhood is known for right, homelessness people. There's some street violence, there's drugs, there's pr prostitution. And the city wanted to solve this with this notion of with police that would bring back the kind of a safety quality of this. And we were against that. And I, we believed that we could do it with the aesthetics, creating something that's beautiful, that you're proud of, make a community proud to be where they are and make a saf safer environment. 20% of vacancy in the store because of the environment not being positive. So we came up with this idea following the blue tree in California that we would do this pink color ribbon above, installed, uh, suspended from, from building to building one kilometer long with 170,000 Christmas ball uh, above the street. The street is beautiful, right? It brings this very positive fun environment, it brings people, the terrace opens onto the street, people come and just right for promenade, but it becomes a destination. And now, last summer, we have now the tourist bus coming in the gay village, something that would never happen before. So this is also this notion that we have, as the work we do, being able to bring a kind of a social democracy in their space. It's not just to make it beautiful, but it also to bring a kind of an added value of a neighborhood by making it beautiful and getting the community involved within this. And last year, it was now the, on the front page of the Ulysse Traveling Guide of bringing people in a gay village, which I think is phenomenally positive. Another very nice project a few years ago in Toronto, we did this urban beach, Sugar Beach, next to a, a factory right downtown of the Red Pat. And we created this kind of a sugar-coated umbrella, which is light pink, downtown Toronto, that we're able to convince them to do this and bring people from the city who don't have cottage, who can't travel during the summertime, and enjoy the summer right downtown. This is a kind of a two-acre site with, uh, it's a, with a promenade in, a, in it. And in the center, there's this kind of two big rocks that somehow you could sit, look out. And those rocks are from Quebec that were sliced, brought on big truck, and installed one by one as this huge puzzle. And then with the seam, we did with kind of a hard rock candy, playing off with the theme of this big idea of being located next to the sugar refinery. So there's always this kind of brand that goes with it. So it's, it's just not creating a, a piece,
but it has a story. It has a narrative. It's able to anchor itself into a neighborhood that becomes a big story. And last summer, the Sugar Beach was, a, was now branding Ontario as a province to bring people, tourism, with this kind of a positive uh, experience of the province itself. We also do things that are a little bit more serious. This is at the Holocaust Memorial that we won last year. It's a monument that, uh, that will demonstrate the harshness of the Holocaust, and also there's a hope, and the hope attached to it for the survivor. It's based on a Star of David that Jew had to wear that would be extra, uh, exterminated by the Nazi, and it become this kind of a, the environment into which the whole story would be told, and with the surrounded the landscape will show resilience of what the survivor had to live, as we do have in the tundra in Canada, that you have like harsh climate, no temperature, nothing, no food, and few trees resisted, but are scarred forever. We just gonna st we started three weeks ago on the new site of Oshiega in the celebration for the Expo 67, the 50th anniversary in 2017. And we will also revisit the site under the Caldaire where electronic picnic take place. One last project, downtown Toronto, we're doing a fountain behind this building that will actually bring the community of the new residents who are moving in all the towers that you have in the back, that brings new family with children, young families also with dogs, and also lots of tourists, and that will have to work and spend some time together on the public realm. And we're creating this beautiful dog fountain made with this very historical, because we're in the old Toronto, an old shape vase with 27 dogs spitting water, and you have the gold bone on top of it that all the dogs are attracted to. So within this, right, this is it's something very playful, but all of the users will come and inter intermingle together. And those are the dogs that we picked. And there's one cat that was brought in the equation because we, to the public consultation, people said, oh, you're just dealing with dogs. What about cats? And then we just picked one. And if you go back, you have it in the front. He's right there. All the dogs are looking towards the bone, but the cat looks away. <laughs> so we're, we're in the process of casting this golden retriever in the cast, and then we're going to be piped. And that's going to create this kind of a piece for next summer. So thank you very much.